Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crim and Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Um, today, Kindles. So I've had this, my uh, Kindle Paperwhite 2021 Signature Edition for just over six months now. Um, I did a review of it uh, when I, well, I did a, a, a video on it when I first got it. I did a, a kind of review after about a month or so of ownership. And now I've had it for six months, um, I thought I would come back and do a long-term review. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is um, three things I love about it, one thing I don't love about it, and one thing I hate about it. Um, and also, the other thing I want to talk about is, is this the right Kindle for you? Okay, so three things I love about it. So the first thing is the screen size. So that one of the things Amazon did with this new Kindle um, is they bumped the screen size up by, I think, 0.8 of an inch, which doesn't sound like much, but actually makes quite a big difference compared to previous Kindles. And I really like that size because um, it is roughly the same size as a physical mass market paperback, which is kind of my favorite size of book. So if you look at the um, the words on the page in this book, obviously I've got the font set a bit higher versus the words on the page in the Kindle. You know, you're getting roughly um, the same amount of, you know, the same kind of page size, not quite the same, but, but there or thereabouts. So this is, I think, a really nice size of page. It's quite comfortable. Um, you, you don't feel like you're having to turn the page too often. Um, I can have the font set a bit bigger and still get a decent number of words on the page. So that for me, you know, page size or the, the screen size is a, definitely a plus for this one. Um, the second thing is the battery life. So in my original video um, on the paper white, I would say I said that the, one of the main reasons I bought it was because the battery life on my Kindle Oasis was terrible. And it was terrible. I could, I would, often not get through a whole book before I had to, to plug it in. Um, whereas this has been fantastic. So I have read this, I, I've read 66 books on this Kindle now, so since getting it. Um, and I, I don't know how many times I've charged it, but I am only charging it, I'm not charging it once a week. I'm probably charging it once every two or three weeks. Um, and that for me is, you know, is what it should be. You, you kind of don't have to think about the battery life on it. Just every so often I check the battery and think, oh, it's getting a little bit low. I'll top it up. Um, but it's not it's not something you have to ever worry about. And the other thing is if you plug it in, um, so it's USB-C now, if you plug it into a decently wattaged um, plug, um, it charges very, very quickly. So I, I, I think in less than an hour, um, or thereabouts, it will be fully charged, which is fantastic. So, you you know, battery life is very good. And when you do need to charge it, it charges quickly. So those are definite pluses for me. Um, and the other thing is the kind of the, the, the weight and balance of it. So it's very evenly balanced. Um, one of the things I liked about the Oasis was that kind of slightly weird asymmetrical design, which made it comfortable to, to hold. But actually, this is not it's not heavy, um, you know, I can quite comfortably lie in bed like that with it um, and, you know, my arm not get tired. So it's it's nicely weighted um, and you can hold it quite easily, you know, in one hand and just flip the pages like that as well, um, which works really nicely. So the, the size and weight ratio with the screen, I think they've got spot on. Um, I think it's, it's really in enjoyable to read on, um, both from a, a weight perspective and a screen size perspective. Okay, so the one thing I don't like then um, is it feels a bit cheap. So, and I don't know if this is because I had the Oasis before, which obviously is their, their premium one. Um, but the paper white to me does feel a bit plasticky and cheap. I mean, obviously it's made of plastic. And I would say that the, you know, the kind of back of it is this kind of slightly silky, very smooth feeling plastic, which is quite warm and, and actually quite nice to the touch. But where that back case meets the the kind of bezel um around the the screen it, there's a there's a tiny bit of give um so if you push on the the front you can kind of feel it giving a bit isn't it? particularly at the, at the bottom for some reason um and that just to me feels a bit cheap and nasty um the the oasis the, the build quality of the oasis feels much better now i would say i haven't had any sort of you know there's been no problems as a result of that um it just to me doesn't feel great um 
So that's the thing I don't like. The thing I hate is sometimes, for no reason, it reboots. So I'll literally be reading and the screen will go blank and then I'll get that, you know, the Kindle logo of the little boy sitting under the tree um, and it'll be rebooting. And I will have done, you know, I will have done nothing. It's not like I'm downloading loads of books or something like that. Um, it just spontaneously reboots. And it doesn't do that often. Maybe once a week, once every other week or something like that. Probably once every two weeks. But nevertheless, that's not great, is it? <laughs> you don't expect things to be randomly switching themselves off while you're using them. You know, battery you know, battery is you know, fully charged or, you know, kind of 70% plus and it will just reboot. So that is a bit crap. And I don't know whether that's a hardware thing or a software thing. I, I suspect and hope it's a software thing and that Amazon fix it you know, in a future version of the Kindle software. Um, but it does feel a bit rubbish, especially on their most recent device. If it was on like a Kindle that was four years old or something like that, I might give a bit of slack on it, but not on, you know, one that's only six months old. Um, so those are my three, my three loves and my um, my one not love and my one hate. And this is, so what I'm going to talk about now is, is this the right Kindle for you? So as I said at the start, this is the signature edition. So you've got at the moment basically four options if you want to buy a Kindle. So you can buy the basic version, which has a, um, a smaller, lower resolution screen. Um, you can buy the Paperwhite non-signature edition. You can buy the Signature Edition or you can buy the Oasis. So straight away, I would say, do not buy the Oasis. The battery life on the Oasis is terrible. The battery life on this is much, much better. I would not recommend anyone to buy the Oasis over this. I can't think of a single reason why the Oasis is better than this. Um, so should you then buy the cheapest Kindle? Um, if budget is really a factor, then yes, the cheapest Kindle will do you absolutely fine. Um, if it's not, then I would buy the non-signature um, edition Paperwhite, just the regular Paperwhite, um, which has the same screen. So, you know, it's the, it looks exactly the same as this. The screen is the same. Um, the, there are only three differences. And I don't think any of those three differences really matter. So one is um, you can charge it wirelessly. Um, so I've got a wireless charger that I can charge this on. I never use the wireless charger with it. I just, every so often, like I said, I plug it into a decently powered USB charger and it charges very quickly. Whereas on the wireless charger, it charges a lot more slowly. Um, so I just, I never bother with the wireless charger. So I think that's a gimmick and you know, not needed at all. The second thing is it's got, um, the signature edition has got adaptive brightness. So what that means is if you've got it switched on, the, the backlight on the screen will adapt um, to the environment that you're in, which sounds great. But it does something really stupid. So one of the things it does is, if you're in a bright environment, if you've got a mobile phone, like a smartphone, your phone will probably do that adjusting. And on a smartphone, it makes sense for it to be brighter if you're in a bright environment. Because the tight, you know, if you're in sunlight or something like that, you need the screen brightness up or you won't be able to see it. Um, but with a Kindle, because it's it, because it's e-ink, a paper, you know, an e-paper screen, um, in bright light, you don't need the backlight on at all. But actually, the adaptive brightness turns the backlight right up, which just seems daft and is going to be wasting the battery. So I've got the adaptive brightness turned off. And if I need to tweak the brightness, it only takes a couple of seconds to do it yourself. Um, so I do not think that the adaptive brightness is worth paying extra for either. And in terms of how much extra is it, I think it's about like 30 quid, $30 more, something like that. I can't remember. I'll put, um, I'll put the prices in my um in my description so yeah it's um i don't i don't think that's worth it either so the final thing which is something that was worth it for me but may not may well not be worth it for you is that the signature edition has got more storage so it's a, the signature edition has got a 32 gigabyte drive in it or you know ssd in it um the regular one has only got uh, an eight gigabyte drive. So that's, you know, will sound like a big difference. You know, it's four, it's got four times as much storage. Um, but in reality, so I've got about two and a half thousand books on this and I've only just gone over the eight gigs. Yeah. So unless you've got a, an absolutely vast library, you don't need it unless you've got a lot of audio books and you listen to audio books from your Kindle. Now I have got few audio books but I wouldn't. I would never listen to them through my Kindle anyway, because it's a bit of a faff doing it on a um, an e-ink screen. Whereas you can get the um, the Kindle app on your phone, 
um, list of audiobooks that way, and it's just much easier to like navigate and you know fast forward and things like that on a phone than because of the reactiveness on, of the screen, uh, as opposed to an e-paper screen, which is that little bit slower. Um, so yeah, storage, unless you are an absolute nutter for buying Kindle books like I am, um, or you've got a ton of audiobooks and you're going to use your Kindle to listen to those audiobooks, um, I think that the, uh, the regular paperwhite is by far the best bet. So hopefully you found that useful. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comments and I will try my very best to answer them. Um, I will put links to the different Kindles I've talked about in the uh, description for the video as well. Those will be affiliate links and all that means is you pay exactly the same price as you normally would, um, but I get like a little finder's fee from Amazon if you use that link to buy the Kindle. Um, so yeah, as I say, I hope that, was, hope that was useful. If you've got any questions at all, just shout. Um, but otherwise, um, if you're new to the channel, um, then I normally talk about books, um, particularly kind of crime, horror, pulpy type books. So if that's your bag, um, then do subscribe. Um, but if not, um, thanks for watching. I hope you're safe and well. I hope you're really good stuff. And I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.